coming up short on catching those smallmouth bass and cannot figure out why. Well, guys, I just finished up a three and a half day trip to Pennsylvania where we slayed 175 smallmouth bass on one of these seven baits. First, I'm going to start with the baits that caught the least amount of smallies and work my way up to the baits that absolutely killed it, as well as some other nuances, including the weather that seemed to be in our favor. And all these baits work really well with a spinning reel kind of a medium powered, moderate action um, rod, as well as eight pound fluorocarbon. All right, the first bait is this guy right here. This is, as everyone knows, the Whopper Plopper. This is the 90, I believe. This one is called the Terminator. And I'll be completely honest with you guys, the reason I probably didn't catch a whole lot of fish on this, I didn't fish it a whole lot because I had other baits that were performing really well. But I fished it for maybe an hour, had six topwater blowups, and was able to bring in one smallie with this guy. But if you love the topwater bite, I probably just could have kept this on um, for many hours and got a lot of bites on it. So usually I only work this in the morning or the evening and just a slow, steady retrieve. Usually I found that if a smallie was going to hit it, it was going to do it within the first few seconds of this thing landing in the water. I think one of the reasons it was hard to hook up a lot of times, smallmouth come out and just miss these things. Things. might be a little large so you can scale down to the 75 which I believe is only three inches long and a little bit fatter all right the next bait is the Helgramite Ned rig guys you fish the rivers anywhere and you start flipping over rocks uh, what you're gonna find a lot of times is the Helgramite and uh, these things are essentially the larvae I think that's how you say it of the eastern Dobson fly and man uh, a lot of people mistake them for centipedes. They are not. And you got to be careful if you pick one of these up alive. If you find one in the wild because they got some nasty pinchers on them that will draw blood. And so the problem is, unless you're seeming uh, or come across a, a place that has a ton of these guys, uh, they're hard to find in numbers. But if you do, man, once you hook one of these up, they got a pretty hard shell. And a lot of times you can catch three, four fish before this bait rips off your hook. And so because of that, I always like to have some of these hooked up to a Ned rig. And basically I'll just pop this along the bottom down where these Helger mites would be anyways. And I had a little bit of luck using this in some of the holes that were artificial only that we were fishing. We weren't allowed using live bait. And the great thing about it is that uh, when a smallmouth hits this, it's usually such a small profile that you're not going to miss that hook set. So I'll throw a link in the description below if you're trying to find these. You're not going to find them just hanging on the wall at Walmart. So you got to kind of special order these guys. I'll put the link in the description below. The next bait that I use is either cold or on fire. It is this guy. This is the Itsy Bitsy Bug um, Jig with the Z-Man TRD Crawls, as you kind of see there. And what I loved about this is that if I did get a hit, I, I don't think I ever missed a hook set on this thing. So it's small enough that the small mouth just absolutely inhale it. And so I fish this in a couple different ways. I either would just throw it out there and obviously you work it like a fleeting crawdad through the rocks. But I was afraid or if I was getting hooked up a lot uh, and losing my hooks and losing my lures, uh, I would just throw this out, let it fall um, if I knew it was, you know, five feet of water that's fishing and let it fall for a second or two kind of work it through the center of the water column a lot of times i would pick up smallies that way so there you have it guys the uh itsy bitsy jig i believe that's by strike king the uh look at look at this look how stretchy those arms are on the z-man trd a little note though if you buy any type of z-man product do not store these with any of your other plastics the next time you come to check them out in your tackle box uh, your other plastics will just be melted. For whatever reason, this plastic does not play well with other soft plastics. So keep that in mind if you decide to hop on and grab some of these. I'll put the link in the description below. All right, the next bait we have is the Square Bill Bomber. Guys, this is the red one. I actually don't recommend the red. I know if you get on the videos, you'll see a lot of guys like red, red, red. I actually just like the crayfish, a natural color that you can get. But at the end of the day, I lost them all to the river. And so being that square bell crankbait, they do a great job of deflecting cover, but sometimes this thing's just gonna get stuck between two giant rocks. And as much as you try to get it out, uh, it's just gonna be stuck there. Uh, and so a lot of times you just stop, these things float really well, so they'll kind of float out of the hole. Instead. So just don't, don't let your first instinct be like tug, tug, tug. You're just gonna get this thing caught tighter in between those rocks. Um, but, you know, just 
two, three, four feet of water. These things are awesome. I actually got a video I'll show you right now, but I threw this guy out. It was maybe two feet of water and I caught doubles. First time in my life, two fish, one cast on the bomber. So uh, like I said, if you're going out to the rivers, do not just come with one of these. They're gonna perform for you. I would recommend buying five or six if you're gonna be out in the water for a few days. And believe it or not, this next bait came in and we absolutely slammed it. And if you watch any of my videos, you'll be like, oh yeah, of course. Of course that's what Darren was fishing the rivers for smallmouth. It's the wacky worm. I'm telling you, it brought in probably 40 of our 175 smallies that we caught. And being that it was super clear water, I'm using a natural presentation color, which is a green pumpkin. But my buddy was absolutely slaying it on the green pumpkin red fleck. But of course, we only had like three of them. So we're like, this thing's like falling apart off the hook and we're still catching smallmouth bass with these guys. But like I said, keep in mind, um, fluorocarbon for the rivers. Uh, I see a lot of videos of other guys who are like, oh, I use mono in the rivers. And what we, my buddy had mono on, he quickly switched because he wasn't able to get the hook set that he needed in order to bear this hook in all these smallmouth bass because there's too much stretch in the mono. Plus, this holds up really well when you're beating it up through the rivers. So remember, eight pound fluorocarbon, wacky worm. And this is, uh, I used a size one Gamakatsu octopus hook. And man, these things perfect setup so always my go-to for catching largemouth bass but we're slaying it in the rivers smallmouth bass the wacky worm all right the next bait that i'm going to talk about was actually really difficult to find but we did find a dozen of them that is the tadpole and the nuance of the tadpole is you can't just hook it up and throw it out there um, like there's no care in the world because you're just, it's just going to fly off your hook because they're really soft so you either hook it through the tail the thick part of the tail if you got a big one or up through both of their lips and so what I'll do is let like maybe three or four feet of line come off and slowly kind of cast it in and I tell you when that tadpole hit within a second smallmouth were slamming it and so if you can find tadpoles we just happened to come across them we had our nets we picked them up um, grab those they work as fantastic smallmouth bass baits so now that i'm talking about live baits guys it's gonna be really important that you check out your local regulations your state regulations for how much live bait you can actually have on your person at any given time i know in pennsylvania it's 50. so if you come across a smorgasbord of tadpoles and you have 51 guys the warden will count so being that we fished for three days straight we noticed when we were catching fish when it comes to the weather and so we figured you know just like you hear all the time the best fishing's in the morning and at night right before the Sun goes down well that is not what we found at all with fishing the rivers in Pennsylvania in fact our worst times of fishing when the Sun was coming up and the Sun was going down we, we caught the most fish between 11 o'clock a.m. and 7 o'clock p.m. and if the Sun was out in the bluebird skies also not as great as if it was overcast so if it was overcast between 11 a.m and 7 p.m we were absolutely smashing it all right this bait is the number one bait that we've used for catching smallmouth bass and it's going to take a little work on your end but the performance is unmatched now here's the thing uh, there's a lot of nuances to fishing this bait so i'm going to show you how to catch them how to hook them how to store them and how to fish these bad boys so when you hear the bait just don't think oh yeah i got it and move on because there's a lot of nuances to it and if you dial this method of fishing in you're going to be a smally catching machine and that bait is the crawdad and we were limited to 50 by pennsylvania law so we actually would catch them take them to the shore actually count them out um, because you don't want to get caught with 51 the warden will count and they will fine you but here's the thing there's a few ways of catching these crawdads um, some are more easier than others way number one is just with a net and your hand this probably takes the longest amount of time but if you understand how a crawdad works then it'll be a lot easier to catch them so essentially you have a net in one hand you use your other hand to kind of coax them backwards so if you know how a crawdad works they go really really fast by flicking their tails backwards they can move forward but really really slow so what you want to do is when you see one or see one kind of tucked kind of in between a rock you want to put your net behind them come at them with your other hand and they'll flick right into your net that's how my buddy and I caught 
Uh, we caught around 100 in about 30 to 40 minutes. So if you find a place that's crawling with them, that might be the way to go, especially if the water is not running really fast. All right, way number two is really great if you have a few people with you, say the four of you. Um, this is going to be scening for them. You're going to be able to find a lot of different uh, baits, live baits, when you're scening. So essentially, it's going to be a one guy with a net. You're going to move into a faster moving waters, and the other three guys or girls will flip rocks. And as you flip rocks, all these crawdads and all these helgramites and all these mud toms are going to get caught in the scene. So after you do that for a little bit, you may have five to 15 crawdads sitting in your scene. All right, and the third way is going to be simply trapping them. Uh, I have this guy right here. Here, this is actually a minnow trap, but once again, check your state regulations because some states are very specific on the hole that it could be. And so I put this out with a little red bread, woke up the next day, had about five to ten crawdads in it. I know there's actually crawdad specific traps. I know that Fraybill makes some of those. Here's one of those. You can kind of see that, kind of what they look like. Sometimes you see these in Walmart, sometimes you don't. But also, if you're going to leave these unattended overnight, some regulations make you have your name, your address, and your phone number attached to it. So don't get caught picking this up the next morning when a warden's over there in the corner watching you. You will get fined. So how I store these things, once you have them, just buy one of these bait buckets. I just hook a stringer up to myself and drag this around the rivers. And anytime you want one, you just kind of stick your hand in there, grab one out. Now, keep in mind. The more crawdads you have, say you max this out at 50, um, they're going to need oxygen. And so if you leave it out of the water for a while, the more crawdads, the more oxygen they're going to be using and the faster they will die if you don't get fresh water in there. Also, if you're going from spot to spot and you're leaving this thing out in the heat, your crawdads will also die. So just keep that in mind. You might want to put a couple ice cubes in there or just kind of be mindful that the water temperature isn't getting too hot. You don't want to cook all your crawdads and you open it up and get ready to fish and they're all dead so a big big waste of time now also being that you're out there fishing all day you might not go through all 50 you might be fishing the next day and i wouldn't recommend just throwing this into the river or stream overnight without doing a few things once again you're going to, want to put your name your address your phone number on it uh, your state regulations that word might be on you if it sees you picking this up in the morning without that but also i wouldn't i would definitely lock it there's a way to lock that but if you put it in the streams i would put a bunch of rocks over top of it um, my buddy learned the hard way he woke up the next morning and a raccoon had gotten to the thing and eaten all of his bait that he spent the entire yesterday catching so a few kind of tips pro tips there um, when you're using live bait when you're storing these things overnight all right now let's talk about how to hook those crawdads now uh, you're going to size up or size down based on the size of your crawdad and guys here's another pro tip when you're catching those things uh, when you're grabbing them out of the water, you kind of feel that they're soft right before you're about to put them on the hook. Man, smallies absolutely love those soft-shelled crawdads. So keep that in mind. A lot of times they don't goof around. They just take those, put them down in their grinders, and it is game over. Um, if you get the kind of the hard-shell crabs, um, a lot of times they'll kind of play around with those, suck them in their mouth, spit them out. If you ever watch underwater footage of this, it's kind of amazing. So go check that out on YouTube. There's plenty of it. Um, but here's what you need. I use a size 1 octopus hook um, from Gamakatsu for my smaller crawdads like that big. When I got to the medium uh, crawdads I used anywhere from a 2-aught to 3-aught EWG or straight shank kind of hook and then when I got to those large crawdads I used a 3-aught hook uh, EWG or straight shank as well. So those work really well for me. My hookup ratio as you can see in the video was also really well and so I know you you can use other hooks and you can have success with it but we dialed in a ton of different varieties of hooks and that's what we landed on. Another pro tip here is what I would do uh, is so you're not changing out hooks every time you put on the crawdad is work your way through all your small crawdads in your bucket and then when you worked your way through those 10 or 15 uh, size up to your two aught or three aught hook, use all your mediums and do the same things. So you're not constantly changing out your hooks. All right, so how to fish the crawdads? Usually, you're looking for those deep holes, those eddies behind the rocks, but you let it fall. One of two things were happening for us. Uh, one, when it right when it hit the water, the smallies would hit it, and then a second or two, or they let it fall all the way to the bottom, 
And once that crawdad kind of turned over, we were able to watch this because the water was so clear. Once it turned over and start crawling, boom, that's when the smallie hit it. Now, it, a lot of times they kind of take it and run with it. And I, may, I might let it, if I have a hard shell crab and it's pretty large, I might let that smallie run with it for 10 to 15 seconds before I set the hook. And they had a lot of luck doing that as well.